guys. I promised to go live at 12. I'm only 12 minutes late. Sorry about that. Um, if you're catching the replay today, I am going to give a miniature emergency preparedness lesson on emergency binders and how to create your own emergency binder. So let's just jump right into it. If you're watching live, give a shout out, say hi and where you're from. And if I can see you in the comments down there, then I will try to say hi back. Um, feel free to ask questions. If I don't get to them on the live video, I'll definitely uh, watch the comments after. So I am Jody from Food Storage Made Easy. And for the first of these few lessons, um, we are going over our emergency preparedness plan. So this is a 10 page document. I put a link to it in the show notes um, so you can see that. Hi, Sheila from Washington. Um, so basically there's three sections of the emergency plan. There's your family plan, your disaster kit, and then your evacuation and car kit stuff. So we're gonna be in the middle part for a couple of days here. Um, and your disaster kit is, you know, your 72 hour kit, your food, your emergency stuff. And one of the things that's important to grab and go with you in an emergency is your important documents. And so that's why we recommend creating an emergency binder. So there's two reasons actually. One is for if you do have to grab and go, you don't have to fish through filing cabinets and grab all your stuff and figure out what to bring because that's pretty frantic in a last minute emergency. Um, and also to make things easy when you have to register kids for school or you're going on a trip and you need passports, everything's all in one place. Super easy. Um, so one thing too is if you have a a house fire, it's good to keep that like all in one place in a safe if you can. Um, and they also have portable safes that you could put it in that you could grab and go. So we'll talk about that a little bit um, later. So the way this looks in our emergency preparedness plan, which is also in our book, if you don't have our book, you can still download the plan for free via the link. So this is what it looks like on this page. So it is pretty straightforward. So I just want to have a little bit of a chat about it. So if you do have questions or comments, please uh, feel free to, to post them so that I'm not just chatting to myself. But the main thing is there are three different types of documents. So you're going to want to have all your family's vital documents. So um, birth certificates, passports, your immunizations, um, even some cash on hand is nice because if you can't get into ATMs, then you need to have some cash, your will, medical documents, any military or important church papers, diplomas are a great thing to have in there. I was looking for my diploma the other day and I found the case for it, but not the actual paper. So who knows if I even actually graduated. Um, Sheila says, keep important papers in the freezer. That's a good idea because then it won't, um, it won't get ruined in a fire or a flood, probably. Probably safe. That's a great idea. Um, marriage certificates, divorce papers, adoption papers, and also current pictures of your family. So if you um, have a kid go missing, it's easy to just grab a picture right there. Because I know for me, I don't really print pictures very often. They're all on my phone, and that's just something quick you can hand out and distribute. Um, pet records, you know, your pet immunizations, and any citizenship documents. So that's the first section, your vital documents. Second section is your insurance information. And now this is something that I struggle with keeping paper copies of because everything is digital these days. And then I'm trying to find something and it's lost. I have like 12,000 emails in my old email account, which is where most of that stuff goes. And so when I need to pull open, pull up, you know, my house insurance papers for some reason, you know, for a refinance or whatever, it's hard to find. So if you've printed them all out and you put them in your emergency binder, that's awesome. And also if you, you know, if you have a house fire and it all burns down and you need record of what's in your house and who to call for your insurance, um, sometimes we don't remember that or we don't have the phone numbers. Um, and we may not necessarily have access to the internet to be able to look it up. So those ins insurance things are important. Your life insurance, your medical insurance, um, any like, medical cards that you want to keep backups of. Um, one thing I like to do too is take photocopies of um, like my license and my credit cards front and back so if like my wallet ever gets lost or my purse gets stolen I have all those phone numbers of all the cards so I keep that in a safe place. Um, also it's great to have a documentation of all of the, um, the important stuff not important, all of your personal belongings in your house. So some people will do this on like a, they'll just video record, walk around their house and video 
everything and you know you can mention the brand names of things um, you could put receipts for any of your major purchases so this is all things where if you had something happen to your home you know what would you need to prove value of in order to file an insurance claim um, so that's the second section third section is financial information so sorry I jumped the gun this is where the section where you would put like your credit card information and then bank statements retirement statements now I know if you're like me that's like digital again and so it's annoying because I used to just take the papers and you know swap it out every time I get the papers so what I do now is I usually get a, either a quarterly statement or an annual statement on things and that's what I put in so I don't necessarily keep it up to date every month but I'll get like a quarterly statement from my investments so I'll stick that in there in that section um, Internet passwords is a really good thing to include because if you're, I don't know, sometimes like you get a new computer and all your saved passwords are in there and you have no idea what any of your passwords are. Um, unless you use the same password for everything, which is not secure. So, um, you know, as long as nobody steals your emergency binder, that's a place you can consider putting it, especially if you do keep it in a safe. Um, so that's kind of for your, your benefit where that's concerned. Um, you can keep utility statements there. Again, that's not something that I do like on a regular basis. Maybe once a year, I'll just print out a current one just so I can have like the name of the utility company if I never need to look anything up because everything is so automatic and digital these days that you you don't keep track as much as you used to. Um, deeds to your property, titles to your cars, um, so many things. I know after I got divorced and we were changing titles of cars to different names and you know you have to like find that information and I had it all in one place so it's super easy to, to if you have everything all where you need it so if you want detailed like a detailed guide and some pictures of a emergency binder uh, I put a link in the show notes to a post called how to create uh, how to create an emergency binder and I think I created little like title pages for your sections so you can have like three sections and you have a little title page for each of those sections um, and so I had this at first there's some pictures of my binder in there that I created a long time ago but I had a little bit of problem with everything that was in the sheet protectors <laughs> if your binder got jostled around it would fall out and it didn't feel very secure and I was always like taping the tops so things wouldn't fall out and then everything was really bulky um, so it's not like a perfect solution but um, we were at an expo a couple years back and found these awesome prepare my life planners they're called you may have seen them on our site so this is what I have converted to now um, so it basically does the same thing it's just a little more specific so ah. Stuff still falling out of mine. This is what it looks like. It's big. It's bigger than a binder, but it has a zipper to keep everything inside. So that's awesome. And then it also has a handle. So I don't necessarily worry about having a portable safe because if I grab my backpack with all my 72 hour kit stuff in it, I can just grab this with one hand. And um, that's, it's like a grab and go emergency binder. So I love that. And then I'll just kind of walk you through. So this is more than an emergency binder. It actually helps you kind of with your entire family plan as well. So you do go through like, how do you prepare your family? How do you prepare your home? How do you, what supplies should you gather? How do you prepare to evacuate? So each section kind of gives you instructions and it has checklists. So did you fill out your contact information? And then it has sheets for all of your, um, your family's personal information and all your emergency numbers and then it has the best part about it that I like is it has specific pockets for everything so in the section for your family plan you have current pictures of all your kids and it fits right there and then these are really cool um, it has zippered pouches and it tells you like what to put in each pouch so at the front of each section Wow I'm getting all confused in my looking at it upside down <laughs> at the front it will say okay there's a folder so put your personal summaries in the folder you can't see this um, and then it has vital documents put those in a folder there's a sleeve for social security cards there's a pouch for your passports so it tells you everything exactly what should go in each one and then you can have all your certificates all your emergency stuff you know church records 
all your insurance things, your financial stuff, any assets that you have. And then up at the back, there's even places for CDs. So if you video all of your um, belongings, you can stick those in there. Um, I actually have pictures that we took while we were building our house. So I keep that in there just for if anything goes wrong in the electric, I can see the insides of our house. Um, and then kind of your estate planning is in the back section. So this is a really cool resource. If you are interested in this, they're, they're, um, they usually go on sale for Black Friday. So if you want to be notified when they go on sale, um, leave a comment. Say me, please, or something. <laughs> and I'll make sure that I remind you when they go on sale. They're usually $99 free tax and shipping um, for the Black Friday sale. So I just need to make sure that she's still going to offer that deal for this um, for this year. So let me know if you're interested in looking at that for your emergency binder. Otherwise, any three ring binder will work. I would highly recommend have it. Well, you kind of have to have sheet protectors because um, you're not going to want a hole punch like your birth certificate and stuff like that. So get a stack of sheet protectors. You can use dividers if you want, but you don't even have to do that, but I like it. And so like I said, you can go to that post on how to create an emergency binder and um, it'll give you like the templates for those, for those sections and that whole list of everything. So I think that's it. If you don't have any questions, I'm trying to keep these short. I know I can get chatty but i've got to go to my daughter's school we're carving pumpkins today i don't know why we're doing it after halloween and fall but it'll be fun so let me know if you have any questions about binders i don't think i put a link to the the planner but i'll add that uh in the comments and have a wonderful day we will talk to you on tuesday hopefully we'll go over more on the disaster kits 72 hour kit food and stuff by then so have a great day bye